is Air Imagination. I'm Ray Sierra. This is Hip Hop Airbrushing Volume 3. Today you're gonna learn color portraits from my man Mike, aka Airbrush Rex. Mike does about 95% of the portraits you see on airimagination.com. Today he's gonna teach you skin tone rendering. He's gonna teach you how to do a little play a little rendering on the jewelry and various other little tips and tricks he has. We also gonna let you know Upcoming, we got about two more DVDs. One that's going to teach you how to tattoo the boots as per your request, and a graffiti DVD that's actually going to come with New York style graffiti lettering template for you guys to follow. I right, appreciate your purchase. Airimagination.com, SoHoodClothing.com. Check out the video. Hi, AKA Airbrush Red, coming to you today from Airimagination.com. This is one of our Airbrush Studios where we uh, produce Airbrush t-shirts. Today we're doing a video on how to paint a color portrait. Our subject today is Christopher Rios, aka Big Pun. Um, let's start out today with a uh, white shirt, a clean board, and make sure that our board is the right size for the shirt. We don't want to overstretch the shirt, thus distorting the face. And we transfer our image today with an opaque projector. Um, you might want to use, uh, we use Astroscope or um, Artograph, which are good makers of uh, opaque projectors, and um, transfers our image very cleanly and accurately. But for those artists who are uh, more skilled in their drawings, to go ahead and uh, freehand draw it. And I like to use um, a soft leaded pencil. I prefer like an 8B down to a 6B and um, sketch our image out with minimal damage to the shirt. Um, I do recommend printing a large reference so that you can s clearly see what it is you're going to paint. Um, if you can't see it, it's hard to paint it. But then again, you might be really a good artist and ad-lib everything. So um, let's get started. Now that our drawing is transferred, um, I'm going to start today with uh, laying down a base color. And an overall color that's here is um, a flesh tone. And I might have pre-mixed my paints beforehand. Some of us mix as we go along. Whatever works for you, as long as it comes out right. Okay, I'll start with the flesh tone. Just make sure our paint is working and our gun is smooth. We don't have the luxury of a, of a wall, maybe a bucket to paint in. All right. But I'm going to want to start with laying out these base colors right over my pencil drawings. And I'm going to lay the colors in the shapes that I see in our printed picture. It may be a good idea to study your picture before you paint so that you kind of know where you're going to go and lay the paint. But notice I'm not doing any detail, I'm just laying down the foundation of my pencil drawing. Now, Pun was a big guy here, so he has a lot of skin on his hands. And I'm not too much worried about the overshade because in his shirt, even though it's a yellow shirt, we do see a little bit of the rest of the color um, from the picture, his skin tones or whatever. So the light will reflect what's around him. And, um, you know, for those of you who take art classes and drawing and painting from um, either a class or, or even a book, they, they're all going to tell you about the same thing. And mostly what it is is observation. Kind of look at what you're going to paint, understand it before you even get to paint it. A little technique that I use is, um, in case you don't have uh, an art tool type uh, mask or French curve, I like using my hands because my hands are, are rather organic shape and I'm doing, you know, a human face. So. Some of our uh, shapes are the same, so I, I just might use my hand just to give me enough shape. That soft look. I 
and then by hand go back and fill it in. Doesn't work all the time, so you just have to be aware of when it is time to apply that technique and when it is time to actually look for the frisket. Oh, uh, excuse me, not frisket, but French curl. Which I will be using a little bit later. But I'm just going to go ahead and tighten up as much as this flesh tone as I can. Now occasionally, um, we, I like to work with opaque paints, which sometimes dries in the jar. So, you will have to keep it flowing smooth and occasionally to the side, just kind of flush out whatever's obstructing. And now I'm getting a little bit tighter as I'm going along and, and making the actual shapes that I need. I don't like to concentrate in one area all the time completely because you tend to overdo it in one spot. So I, I like to move around to kind of bring the picture together as a whole. But that's just my style, so you work with how it's comfortable for you. You just kind of take my techniques and lessons and, and, and apply some of you to it and make it your own. Now, I'm not too concerned with missing, you know, one key piece of detail because, like I said, like most paintings, um, it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress and, um, you know, you, you kind of look at it and take a moment and, and step back and look at what you got and make your adjustments accordingly. Try and pay attention to your printed picture because your printer, you know, uses four colors and it makes shapes and designs to make an image on paper. And what you're doing is you're becoming a printer yourself and uh, you're going to imitate these same shapes and try and get them here. And like most people, you know, um, in front of the face, side of the face, uh, it makes a distinct shape and you just want to try and capture some of that. Capture shapes and shades so they really give us the character of that person, you know, that it doesn't look like someone else or something like that person. But that's, that's what pictures normally are, or, or they're just shapes and colors put together to give you an illusion of an image. And that's what we're doing. We're applying the paint in such an illusion to create a, a picture. I believe it's seeing the full truth. Okay, and we're just going to continue. Now I might move the gun and make little patterns on the skin because that's what I see in the hands. I just want to get the kind of characteristic of it. I mean, right, I'm just about ready to add a second color here. Usually you look at the pictures and people's skin tones are either yellowish or orange or more brown. Um, you look at the picture and you determine what it needs. I see a lot of yellow in overall this picture, so I'm going to add yellow to certain areas just to give me that feel. Um, it's like a wash, so don't get too deep into it. You know, like, oh my God, it didn't fall into the right place. But it's also the yellow that's in his hat, so... I don't know, maybe the photo shoot was like that. All right, so I'm gonna just add some here. That same yellow. So I can start getting a little bit of sharp edges. so it doesn't look too spray painted. Also, by putting it around the shirt, um, 
kind of helps me see, again, what I originally had tended to do was tint this face. You might want to step back, take a look at what you're doing, get a feel for it, and put it where you feel it's needed. You know, you're an artist, so you go with feelings. And a lot of times, your first instincts are the best. You know, when you start thinking too much about it, to the point where it hurts, it'll show in the picture. Um, another color I might use is orange. Um, not just bright orange, but I might drop a little white in it and brown so that, um, you know, like I said, again, you, you adjust it according to the picture. And it's also um, watered down slightly so that it's not so opaquishly intense. And I can kind of tint. Now, orange is a great color because um, when we're doing a lot of fast porches and things of that nature, sometimes you get away with a lightness of orange. And then you get a fluorescent look, I mean, um, flesh tone look to it. It's just a, Give me a little character of the person, you know, the mood, the mood of the picture, the tone of the picture, whatever you have. All right, don't forget to take a step back, look at what you're doing. Um, a lot of times you might want to just take a break if you're moving too fast. Um, and assess what you have already done. And adjust as needed. I do a lot of adjustments during the painting, so I don't expect mine or everyone else's to come out perfect the first time. You might have to go back over it or take a double look up, you know, over what you did. I'm starting to feel like I got enough color in here. Just some of the same color in the hat. Because like I said, we share colors around here, around him. move around a lot on the painting. I don't, I'm not concentrating yet in one area. I'm sort of molding the picture. Those of you who sculpt, you should understand that feeling. And might I recommend sculpting sometimes because it really helps you um, get the feel for 3D objects and the way light hits something. And I, I'm not, I like using opaque paints because they're thick. You know, you almost want to mold this paint. And that's how you should attack your t-shirts. That's really my style. A lot of us paint like that. Um, I like to see the paint, like again, be okay. Right. Um, also, what you might want to take the time to do now, um, as I'm nearing the end of this molding process, is if you have available a heat press, um, I recommend heat pressing your shirt at this moment. Or, if you have an iron, um, definitely to put a Teflon sheet over it and iron down these fuzzies, because um, as for now, it's picking up overspray, and we want it to pick up overspray so it mix our colors. But at some point, when I go to do detail, I'm going to want it crispy, and therefore a, a nice heat press smooth shirt allows us to get a clean, clean spray. You might find that uh, pink and red are also evident in, uh, in doing a portrait. Um, I might use a, a light pink, definitely not a shocking pink, but a light pink just to kind of color up the lips around the nose area, and definitely the eye area. Now, mind you, um, I'm not specifically placing them. I'm kind of putting them in a roundabout area. I also might want to put a little bit on his cheeks. And if it's not in the picture directly, it might feel like it needs it, you know? And you add a little bit of your own style. Um, the hands is also another place where um, you know, the blood is shown. Um, also the blue color. We're going to add a little bit of blue to it. I'm going to show you how to do that. And the reason I choose blue is um, underneath your skin, the, the, the other blood that needs to be oxidized, it, it gives it a blue appearance. So when doing male portraits around the face, the shaved area, are all evident of that. And it adds a little bit of Printed picture of realism. 
Now I'm going to check this over here. A little while ago, my blue was a little bit too opaque, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to quickly um, add some water to it. Uh, I recommend either using water and water-based paint, or um, colorless paint. So for this purpose, water will work just fine. And I'm just going to overspray and kind of tint it. You see, even in a printed copy, it looks blue to the tone. Okay, I'm not saying that we have blue skin, but it, it gives it kind of like a photo printed look. Yeah, my finger's not going to work for that one, so I'm going to grab a French card. You can use your favorite brand. They come in many different shapes. If you find one that works for you, be careful not to get too much of hard lines. Again, we're just um, molding, blending. If you didn't get a chance to iron it before, definitely do it at this point before you start putting the white. Let's take a moment and uh, heat press our shirt. Alright, now we, like I said, we heat pressed this shirt. Um, I heat pressed it on the board so that not to distort the picture when I put the shirt back on it. But, you know, sometimes you can without messing that up. Um, what I did was smooth it down so that my next set of colors, so I'm going to use white. Um, Sometimes you might want to drop a little flesh tone in the white so it's not brilliant white. And I'm going to just start pulling the highlights out in his face. Um, this look, before I pressed it, like I said, it's fuzzy. It catches the overspray. I want that look as a part of a building process in my painting. But now I want it clean and crisp. So we're going to go ahead and grab a white. And sometimes, sometimes it's too white, so I just might take a drop of flesh. Now for me, instead of starting on the eyes, I like starting in the nose, because it's the center of the face. And um, I'm definitely airbrushing tighter, closer to the, to the shirt, because it's not such an overspray thing. It's now we're actually doing our finer airbrushing and um, make sure that your gun is working watch where you aim the gun with overspray make sure that you're not painting something that you're going to regret later as you can see I use my finger a lot just because the shapes are like I said organic that's just for doing portraits. I mean, when I'm painting cars and things, and I need sharp edges, you need a sharper object. I'm not too worried about hair right now. Um, we're sort of going to kind of continue as if he was cleanly shaven and come back later and put the hair on. You see the smoothness now that we press the shirt. And do that periodically. I mean, if you have to stop and press it a few times, then do that, you know, until you're satisfied with the smoothness of the shirt. Because always painting on smoother objects give you a cleaner look. But like I said, in the beginning, when uh, we were building this, we wanted that, that rough look. So it served its purpose. And here's where your drawing skills come in, because you're kind of drawing with an airbrush. So here it does pay to be an artist and use your art skills. What I'm doing now is building the highlights in the lip. I'm going to come back later and tint them. Okay. I know people you sometimes want to have trouble. Use all the little airbrush techniques you learn, you know, some gradient, some actual... Um, 
Empress dots and daggers and strokes. This is where it all comes together. And you use it as needed. You apply it as needed. Of course, from doing many of them, it becomes easier every time. Kind of know what to do. But for your first time users, you know, use what you practice. Strokes, daggers, dots, and gradients. And I'm almost good on one half of the face, and I'm going to move on over to the other side. come back with brown after this just to give you a heads up so you know right, don't forget this is not your final coat of this lighter color you know white or off white bone white white with a little flesh whatever this is just helping to sculpt the painting right, take a look at your pictures some areas require hard on one side gradient on the other you make that determination as you see the picture, as you see fit. And of course the skin has many blemishes and stuff, I mean, I'm just going to get the most prominent ones. Alright, don't mind this picture here too much, this uh, tattoo was superimposed, because those of us who know pun, when he took this picture, he did not have that tattoo at the time, um, but before he passed, his hand was definitely tattooed. So I just superimposed that so I know where um, where the letters are. Take a look, and, and if you're satisfied with uh, how tight you did it, um, we go on to the next color, which uh, I'm going to use as a brown. Sometimes straight out of... Uh, the creative file, I use Createx Brown, but sometimes uh, the mixes are a little different, so you can adjust it. Either add more yellow to it to lighten it up, or um, you might want to deepen it to the red side, or put a drop of black just to darken it a bit. But you determine that as you spray it, again with the drawing. Um, don't be afraid to go lightly and build it up. Sometimes less is more, so... You can be gentle, as I suggest, do, because it's easier to build it up than to bring it down. Um, here's where you exhibit your fine airbrushing skills again. Um, by keeping it. Now, I don't rely on just one piece of the equipment. You know, I'll use a little bit of it and then go back and freehand on top of it to soften the look. Now, I'm as I'm spraying, I still got distance between my uh, shield and the shirt so that my line is not so hard. I'm just going to block it for a little bit, you know? And remember to imitate the shapes that are seen in the picture. People in the house. And you see me drawing a little bit of the hair in there. It's just to kind of indicate where it's going to be. I don't want to do that too much because I don't want to cover up the skin. But it will let me know where the hair is going to be placed. The dark spots I'm hitting, because as you can see in the picture, sometimes they make shapes. And I just want to imitate those shapes. because I'm in the area around here and there's a lot of artists, uh, a lot of you guys are like me, I, I sometimes get distracted and move on to the next thing and I do this in a way to kind of keep me entertained and inter interested in the picture so I can keep it moving. 
because sometimes you end up too much in one area and uh, it'll kill your interest and you tend to rush it when you shouldn't so what you should do is um, do some applications to one area and if you feel yourself losing attention to that move somewhere else and come back to it later and here it looks like um, a hard line and then a gradient so just threw my finger in there to give me that shape I might shape the entire uh, bearded area just so I don't go beyond and then just kind of keep my strokes in between with that area but don't make it too dark as you can see I'm at a little bit of distance just to give it the added variety you know because the hairs go in different direction depending on the length Not too sharp because it is a little out of focus in the picture. Not everything is in focus. What it is that you, um, you know, the shape that you need to make. Don't be afraid of the eyes. Look at your picture, your reference, and see that the shapes that it makes. And just imitate those shapes. It's not always just circles. Sometimes they're just clusters of that shape. Here I'll continue with the medium brown with some shadow for the eyebrows. I like to still use my finger just like a light shield. Move around the face to kind of keep from getting bored in one spot. I'm going to get the hair on the arms again with the light dagger strokes. And it's still with the light brown, same color. Again, dagger strokes gives me the pattern of the knit, keep it light. I like the French curve shield. Again, this is all routine stuff you learn from practicing with daggers. I'll go back and render some white just to keep it popping. Alright, here I'll mix uh, a black brown. I don't like to use black on the portrait, but you do make a very deep brown with a touch of black in it. You mix them accordingly, kind of test them out. But here I'll do the darkest part first, which is the eye pupil and, uh, and his eyelid. And I kind of don't want to make anything else darker than that around it. Sometimes I pick at the paint tip just to get the dry paint off the tip of the gun. Stay light, don't hit it heavy. Take your time and build it up.
see me use my finger a lot, it keeps a soft um, edge. If I really wanted a hard edge, I'll use the um, French curve. Short daggers again, I'm rendering eyebrows. Keep everything light. You build it up later if you have to. Really try to keep true to the, the shapes you see in the picture. That's why you don't get it in your head that I'm painting an eye, I'm painting a nose. Or like I'm painting shapes. And you got to keep the tip of that gun clean so you can get crispy, crispy lines. And all of this is that black brown mix. Beard, and mustache, all with light dagger strokes. You'll find that this stroke is so useful in making all kinds of designs. got to practice at controlling that gun distance and how much you open the gun are all relevant to the patterns that you leave For the rest of the shirt, besides the skin and the flesh tones, um, I'll do the dark shapes of his shirt just to give me a solid pattern on what it is, and uh, I'll put color over it afterwards. Use again the French curve. Remember, it's always good to have a good, sharp, clear, large reference. If you can't see it, it's tough to paint it. So make sure you see what you're painting.
that just uh, from here, from this point we're just trying to work all these dark shapes and it's sort of like sculpting sculpting the fabric the fold be aware of which side your over, you know your uh, soft overspray goes to, uh, it helps to render the folds and if you have to use the French curve to shield the overspray from one side of the fabric to the other um, a lot of times guys make mistakes of, of either not using a sharp edge and using overspray on both sides and it, and it doesn't quite render the folds of the fabric so just take a moment take a look at your picture and you know using your hand or your shield or whatever's handy yeah. A more flexible shield. You kind of hold it, fold it. These are found that most of your um, art supply distributors. The stripes. The stripes are important. They kind of get the the flow of the fabric, all the little folds and inconsistencies. Try to imitate them as close as you can to the picture you're looking at. You can see here direction is important. What I did was superimpose the photo reference, which made it easier for. Here I'm rendering the, the tattoo, and I'm probably going to want to put a little blue. The tattoos give um, a bluish color under the skin. So I'll use like a, a black blue with some brown in it, and um, kind of gives me the color of ink under the skin, black ink under the skin. On that big hands, that was a... That was a large tattoo. And actually, this tattoo, when it wasn't on the picture at the time that he did this photo shoot, so we kind of superimposed it just in the photo, just so I had a, a reference of it. So we'll color it solid because you know, it's going to be blotchy. Okay. Um, this kind of wraps up the portrait, the hat, and the shirt. Um, I mean, I'm going to want to put a few highlights after it's all done. Um, but right now, we're going to work on the jewelry and then move on to the background. For painting sakes, I'm going to use the Createx Iridescent Gold just because it makes good design on the shirts. With the gold, and then with a dark outline, outline the shape. Face here so I don't get none of that gold on it. It's always imperative to keep yourself clean. but we don't know what he had. Got my dogs on top of the gold. The picture is a lot of white and it's out of focus.
be really cool to apply some rhinestones to the, to the jewelry. And for some people like to go that extra step, I, I, I like the rhinestones glued to the shirt. So often, like, you take a minute, and step back, and look at your work. Just make sure the highlights are consistent. We are back on the link. The links can be tricky, because they're very geometrical, so, you know, just keep your stuff consistent. Take your time, don't rush. Same spot on each link. These are repetitive patterns. Here's a zipper. Very short daggers. Try and space them out evenly, and it'll give you that zip on power. Um, drawing jewelry designs is helpful. get a lot of drawing time in. Most of my time is spent airbrushing. Whatever the eye sees it and you feel it needs it, you put it. It's your style, it's your shirt, it's your thing. Um, and I'm going to show you a real quick and easy way to do this background without getting over overspray on your painting. All right, what we have here is a simple mask, a real cheap economical stencil. What we got is wax paper and spray glue. Um, what I did was spray one side of the wax paper, not too much, and just enough to keep it tactful to the shirt, and glued it to the area I want to project. I mean, protect because what um, what we're going to do is paint the background, and I don't want any paint on him. It also helps give that pop. So anyway, um, what I did was lip up the tape here on the bottom because I'm not covering the entire shirt and any overspray. I wanted to hit the the tape and, and fly away from the shirt. Okay, we have a sharp um, X-Acto blade. Uh, make sure you use new ones. Uh, try not to use a real dull one. And it does not take any kind of pressure to cut the wax paper. So do not push into the shirt or anything. You're just touching the paper. You're just touching it. I mean, you can hear it cut. It's a very light touch. I am in no way putting any kind of pressure on this blade. It just glides by itself and cuts the paper without cutting into the t-shirt. Very lightly it, it just breaks it away. Now the overlap here, I might, there we go. 
Sometimes you just pull it away from the, the remainder of it and it separates. Bingo. See that? The break and separation. Done. Other side. Now we can do this background without worrying about overspray on him. And the worst thing I, I don't like is coloring around it just to avoid hitting him. You can't get that nice gradient. And then again, you know, like I said, we like to fill up the whole shirt. Really give you your money's worth. A little iridescent purple. Dark brown, black brown. Look at that nice sky. Alright, we want to be careful with that. As you can see, our paper is wet. Um, if I use the dryer, it'll curl the paper, so you know, you just want to be careful. Maybe I'll hold it down. Because the paint is wet, it moves, and it, I kind of like that pattern. Sometimes you don't want that happening, but it, for this purpose, it's working. So that's where inevitably I'm going to end up. Boom. And I just want to be careful. I don't want to push the paint underneath it too much. Kind of a glow around him and the building, and between the building. Doesn't take much. So. All right, give that a minute. Let that background dry. I do want to add a little more. Um, for you, the artist, you put what you like, your style. The whole day, you know, that'll really give you something sharp, but. Buildings are tricky, you know, not really, they don't have to be. There's a lot of windows and stuff and people get spazzed out. And, you know, I, I just kind of like drawing a grid, just get my windows and then I'm going to block out some of them. Um, I'm not going too crazy with it, I still, I kind of like the loose it. So, if you want to try and choose your company, I might decide to shade a little bit and get the cloud right there. That's right, a little bit dirty. It's all good. I don't mind, I don't mind people trying to imitate my work. One thing we don't do is take someone else's picture and say that we did it. So, you know who you guys are. Email us your, your picture to do, you know? Okay. Okay, I see some evidence of the residue. All the while I'm doing this, I'm looking at the picture to my right, which is off camera. And what I recommend is when you're all done, you lay out your signature. Airbrush Refs, and you find our works at airimagination.com. Uh, you Google it, or if you need to know how to spell it, it's A I R M A G I N A T I O N.com. 
where you can find all kinds of airbrush goods, t-shirts, jackets, jeans. If you don't see it on the site, um, sneakers, uptowns, you send it to us, we paint it. Um, the best ideas are your ideas. Um, this is wearable artwork, which is as American as apple pie, wearing your opinions, your, uh, your feelings, or what you like on your shirts, on your clothing, to express who you are. So give us a call, uh, hit us up in an email, send us your JPEGs, and uh, show the love. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you at the next video. I had, what did I tell y'all guys? Yeah. The fortune came out crazy. This is something that we were particularly selling our site around yeah. $85 to $95. Um, you can get either further details using mic techniques to making it more realistic, even beyond this. It all depends on how much time you're willing to invest and put into it. We have two more DVDs coming out to follow right after this one. We have a graffiti one that comes actually with a graffiti template. You'll be able to take the New York style graffiti lettering and just make whatever name you want, whatever word you want, and we're going to show you how to paint them. And we got, a, as per request from a lot of our old customers, we got the DVD that's going to teach you how to tattoo the boots. As I was saying, everybody's asking how we do it. All right, so this is airimagination.com. Once again, thank you. Shout out to my man Migs. Take it right. Yeah.